So in those scenarios where the tenant base itself is going to pose a, a higher level of risk, y'all, if you don't go with the Section 8 tenants, what you could end up with is a house that looks like the one that you're viewing right now more often than not. No. No front door. They wanted footage of this though. Bam! Kick the door open. Hello, anybody home? When you're investing in the ghetto, you're investing in these really cheap houses, guys. Uh, you're going to run into tough situations. You're going to run in uh, to issues, right? You're going to run into crime. You're going to run into people just jacking your stuff up, all right? Uh, that is what happens when you're buying properties for, you know, these, like, you know, low amounts, right? It's a casual stroll through the neighborhood. All the, all the beautiful trees. It's just in the yard? Yeah, it's just right there. <laughs> For a free gas meter, dude. Welcome to the Investment Properties for Sales Show. Folks, thing is selling at or above list. We are going to provide you guys with complete transparency and education. We take you to the video tour. Won't watch TV, giving it to you straight. All right, y'all, if you're looking for some dirt, dirt cheap properties, man, you're looking for a rental project from top to bottom, start to finish, I got you covered. 7305 Montgomery, Cleveland, y'all. $14,900. Where else in the world can you buy a freaking two-unit apartment building for under $15,000, right? Cleveland, Ohio is like literally one of the cheapest places in the United States of America that you could live, okay? $14,900. They don't have stuff cheaper than this, bro. Like, you have to go to the bombing lines in Ukraine to find anything cheaper than this. But hey, don't you worry. You don't have to go there, but I will be honest with you. As you can tell, it definitely looks like a bomb went off inside this motherfucker. Because holy shit, did this house get torn the hell up. All right, so you're going to need to do the rehab from top to bottom. Let me hit you all up with a little secret, okay? This particular neighborhood, this is a little sketchy, all right? This is, uh, you know what the kids are calling the ghetto these days, okay? When you're investing in the ghetto, you're investing in these really cheap houses, guys. Uh, you're going to run into tough situations. You're going to run in uh, to issues, right? You're going to run into crime. You're going to run into people just jacking your stuff up, all right? Uh, that is what happens when you're buying properties for, you know, these, like, you know, low amounts, right? Like, I mean, you know, you, you do a nice high-end kitchen kitchen in someone's house, and you could spend more than the cost of this entire home on your friggin' appliances, dude, right? Your cabinets could be like double this, okay? So it, there's a give-take in this industry, right? And it's not like when you buy a home like this, guys, uh, in a tough neighborhood like this, that it's always going to look like this. Those of us that are in this space that have successfully navigated these tough neighborhoods, these low-income neighborhoods, and made a lot of money, uh, we know how to play the game. We know how to do what we got to do. And I'll tell you right now, y'all, the biggest thing you need to understand is Section 8 is your friend, okay? Section 8 is your friend, right? Section 8 is like the cheat card when you're in the ghetto, right? Now, if you watch a lot of the content we put out here on Holton Wise TV, you, you check out what we do, right? We, you know, we have this show, right, where we sell you properties, but we also have the Tennis from Hell show, which is by far the most popular show we put out there, right? We show you guys the real-life experiences, the perils of Section 8 investing and low-income investing, right? And, you know, we got all the clips, Holton Wise TV. We're on, like, every, you know, media platform, right? So, like, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all of them, right? And the rough stuff that you see, by far, gets so many more views than anything else, right? Uh, because people like that shock value, and a lot of it is like, you know, Section 8 type neighborhoods, I guess you would say. Not necessarily always Section 8 tenants, but Section 8 tenants do jack up your house quite a bit sometimes, right? They are tough tenants to manage, right? So because of all that, Section 8 gets this like bad rap, right? But it's just people who are not really putting together all the pieces to the puzzle, okay? Let me explain. If you have a home, and it is in like a, 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 a nice suburban area where the majority of people living in that area are owner occupants and the home is fairly expensive, okay? If you were to rent that home, 
in that scenario, a Section 8 tenant would typically pose a much higher risk to you, the landlord, than if you were renting it to non-Section 8 tenants. Because typically your non-Section 8 tenants in that scenario are usually going to have, you're going to have like a, a large amount of people to choose from that have good credit scores above 700, have dual income, right? Have a good work history, right? Don't have a, a, like a, a long criminal record, right? You're usually going to get a lot of tenants wanting to live in a neighborhood like that that will hit those criteria, right? So in that specific scenario, y'all, Section 8 tenants are, are, are by and large, the majority of your Section 8 applicants will not have uh, those qualifications and those characteristics and those character traits that are desirable to you. So in that scenario, a Section 8 tenant would be tough, would be rough, would be a hard tenant to work with, and you probably wouldn't want to, right? But a lot of people, they end it right there, and then they always go, no, Section 8 tenants are always the worst. But no, when you go to a neighborhood like this, y'all, Section 8 tenants are flipped. They are now the least risky tenant. Yes, a Section 8 tenant still poses a much higher risk than the tenant I just described in that, like, higher grade neighborhood scenario but here's the difference this is this is the, this is the secret sauce y'all this is where the sausage is made the tenant i just described is not going to live in a neighborhood like this with housing values like this with a level of crime that this particular neighborhood has right so at that point your only two tenants, two types of tenants that are probably applying are going to be your section 8 tenants and then also tenants who don't have section 8 who also have a lot of the same characteristics uh, in risk traits that those Section 8 tenants are going to have, and that's going to be a low credit score, low to no income, poor job history, criminal record, right? So in those scenarios where the tenant base itself is going to pose a, a higher level of risk, y'all, if you don't go with the Section 8 tenants, what you could end up with is a house that looks like the one that you're viewing right now more often than not. Because in these neighborhoods, it just spirals out of control, right? You get a tenant who doesn't pay their rent. They live there. They're mad that you're evicting them. It takes you a couple months to get them out. Finally, you get them out. Now you have a vacant house that's in the middle of the hood. The hood does what the hood does, and the hood comes in and fucking steals your plumbing pipes, right? Because you could uh, scrap your copper, okay? You scrap your copper, and then you get a little cash, then you take that cash, and then you do a little heroin, y'all. I'm just kidding. You don't do heroin. You do fucking fentanyl. It's 2024, people. You can't buy heroin anymore. Duh. It's just fentanyl, okay? It's just fentanyl. Sometimes it's called heroin, but that's just marketing. It's just fentanyl. But anyway, so people are doing that. Uh, they're stealing your appliances. People will steal your hot water tanks. Ste people will steal your furnaces, right? All of those issues, and then you got to spend a whole bunch of money putting it back together, and then it's hard to hire quality contractors in these neighborhoods because, you know, they're just tough, rough neighborhoods. Contractors don't like to go to tough neighborhoods. They don't want their truck getting broken into. So y your quality of work and management and stuff, that's even harder. And it just continues spiraling down, right? And there's all these issues with these low-income neighborhoods. But if you go back to the root of the issue, what is it? It's that at some point, the rent didn't get paid, and that's what leads you to all these bad things. A Section 8 tenant has got their rent guaranteed. The investors who think they could go into low-income spaces, they think they could take the pro of cheap properties, and they don't assess the cons, the risks properly, are the people who end up with their houses looking like this all the time. Me, myself, I've been invested in rough neighborhoods for a very long time, and I've made a lot of money because I'm fucking smart. I understand how to analyze risk, and I understand who's more risky, what, when, and where. So when you're in a neighborhood like this, guys, you go Section 8. And when you go Section 8 with this property, you're going to be able to bring home $1,700 a month for a friggin' property that you bought for less than like a nice suburban appliance package. You go Section 8, will there be bumps in the road? Yeah, absolutely. Will you get some tenants that are kind of dickheads? Absolutely. Will sometimes people mess your house up a little bit? Sure. But risk, reward, it's all baked into the cake. And when you go Section 8 in these neighborhoods, your tenants are going to have a extremely high High, high uh, probability of paying the rent almost every single month, number one. Number two, they typically stay in properties much, much longer 
than tenants who do not have Section 8. So they're not as transient, so you do much less turnovers. You have much less time where your units are vacant, which leads to much less crime because you can't really break in to an apartment to steal the copper when, like, a family's living there. Does that make any sense, guys? So that's really the cheat code. Yeah, Section 8 investing is tough, and it does come with its own set of risks. But if you're going to be in these types of neighborhoods where Section 8 is prevalent, you best bet your safest bet to a consistent monthly cash flow is to embrace the Section 8 program like I have and make a whole bunch of money. But, again, you don't have to. It's totally up to you. You can do whatever you want. But, again, I've seen it time and time again, being in this game, doing $200 million worth of sales. The people that go into these neighborhoods and they don't go Section 8 are the people that have their houses look like what I've presented to you in this video, much more often than those who work that fucking Section 8 system the way it's supposed to be worked. Now, if you guys are interested in buying this property or you want to take a tour of the property before you're ready to buy it, just let me know. Hit us up, sales at HoltonWise.com. You can submit your offers there or uh, set up an appointment for us to have you tour the property so you could put together your scope of work to get it from where it is today. Totally bomb the fuck out to Section 8 ready, ready to rock and roll and bring you a very large, consistent monthly cash flow every month, just like I do. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, man, it's the front of the house. Cemetery. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Over under on crackheads. Under three. Under three? Yeah. It doesn't look like it gets a lot of. Yeah, it doesn't look like it gets traversed very much. Alright. Well, there are no windows. Or doors. Well, or doors. doors but might as well not be. Are those standees from like GameStop? Open too? Yeah. Front door? No. No front door. They wanted footage of this to BAM! Kick the door open. Hello, anybody home? What? What was that? Was that Derek? I don't. I couldn't tell. I heard something. Derek, there. is that you? Oh. Yeah, that's me. Oh, what the fuck, dude? You're scaring everyone. You didn't scare me, but I was like, oh, hey, we're here to film. Yeah. You hear anyone snooping around? No. You should be able to very easily hear footsteps above us. Yeah, hey, be careful. The floor is soft as fuck. Whatever it is, let's make it quick. They got shoes here like they come back. Oh, man, don't be coming back to this place. Yeah, I don't know if it's safe to go upstairs. Yeah, the stairs don't seem safe. Like, there's like an animal up there. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know if You can hear that shit? Yeah. That's why I gave That's someone. Like, I designated someone a, a job. I said, put these on and listen. Oh, hey, man, how you doing? Just kidding. I think the bathroom's behind you right here. It is, yeah. I can see into the tub. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great tub access. No toilet, though. That's... You should have down the hole. No, hole's gone because there's a hole in the ceiling. 
I'm gonna guess there hasn't been. This is how it's gonna get knocked over. I don't know why. This should, yeah, well, this should just be the condemned, bro. I don't think that. uh... I don't even know if you can do it. It's not in your way. No, you're sure, man. There's just. Uh, nope. There's a little closet over there, but I don't want to. Look at this fucking bed. Though, if there was an old TV around here with copper in it, it's Not fucking anymore. gone now, dude. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's not that door. Get off my fucking foot! <laughs> <laughs> you stepped on it like a perfect spot. Here's one. Hold this for me while I peel this peel yeah. pill bottle off my foot. Dude, this is issued in 1995. That's not there. Oh, shit. Yeah, you pass it off as myself. Put your picture right on top. Okay. Oh, I don't know. This... Probably be better to just... Yeah, as a look. Ow, my neck. <laughs> you want me to leave? My old ass back. Yeah, if you want to. I don't. Pete said there's nothing up there, he'd hear it. Yeah. Oh yeah, Pete's got the uh... Yeah. I thought it maybe there right, was like fuck a it. animal crawling around or something. Like Pete's got the bionic ears on. Type shit, yeah. Alright, fuck it. I didn't hear like Mostly I want you to go because I'm much heavier than you and I'm worried about those <laughs> steps that you do not look safe. That's fair. Who's the lightest that probably me or Vince? Probably me. In our day to day, did you guys assume that we would be fucking crawling through a hole on Quincy Ave? Cause I didn't. I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, dude, I fucking had it too. Did I just hear a smoke alarm beat? Probably. I heard something. Watch your step, it's holes in the floor. I think it's a dog bark. Yeah, outside. Oh, oh, oh. You want to take the elevator to the street, dude? Look at this fucking thing. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh. oh! He's completely come off the house, dude! <laughs> you know where I'm not going, though? The attic. What the fuck? This place looks like it might have been abandoned since like A while. 2000. Pretty long time, yeah. yeah just make sure you're, just make sure careful where you are. There's holes in the floor on the other side. Dude, that chair in there is like some fucking. Silent Hill oh, shit. Up through the ceiling, you can mm -hmm. see the fucking sky through the air. Yeah. That's a real winter, this, this area. This shit definitely gets a lot of water because everything in here is extremely saturated. Floor's really weak right here. Oh, th there's a tarp down. That's cool. 
place does have a garage, but it's not like accessible. I was able to get that other room from the back side, by the way. Yeah, I was going to say, don't pass through that because there's a hole in the floor. Yeah. Nice, dude. Yeah, careful. The elevator's primed and ready for you guys. Can you check out the, uh... You can see the wall is completely disconnected from the... Yeah, it's pulled completely over. away. Now check out what? In that room, dude. You went over there? No. Oh. Huh. I wouldn't. Yeah, there's not much more in there. The in your car. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what are they doing? It's a, it's a, it smells like that's a piss room. <laughs> it could be the piss closet, dude. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a piss house. This is a piss house. Yeah. Welcome to WMMS! <laughs> My fat ass walking around on this completely fucked wood floor. <laughs> oh, is this the toilet? Free toilet! Well, one of these spots. There's a hole right here. I can see yeah, all I'm, the first floor, so. That's why I'm not gonna fuck with this attic, dude. Yeah, well, All the floors are so wet, there's yeah, no those way. steps are super soft, I wouldn't test it. Although, there is a really creepy fucking chair up there at the top of the steps. I mean, you think That's you can... Chair. And the camera won't adjust to it? Oh, let's go, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Pete, if, you're, if you want to go, you can go, but... Yeah, I'll just go to like the top. Yeah, yeah and just do like a 360 up there. Yeah. You got the headphones You are the too? lightest. Yeah, just get as much footage as you can. I think this is a good one. Just for Jesus the Christ, this is the most narrow fucking staircase know, I've ever seen. Look how narrow the staircase is, These things on, that was fucking horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. I had to like stop in place for a second because I was like, I'm going through the floor. Yeah. <laughs> good, cool. All good? Oh, yeah, I'm good. good. There's not a lot in here. Right? Yeah. Figured it's shitty. Off. I mean, it, <laughs> it looked like the rest of the house. Yeah, his car's already been towed. Yeah. He's gonna drive down the street and fucking tear his shit off. You're gonna come back and you're gonna be lifted and go. <sighs> the Lord's Prayer just out on the porch, dude? The disrespect. Disrespect. Disrespectful. We got everything in here except the basement's pretty much fucked in here. Except yeah, the best basement is. I didn't even see a door for it. Unless it's around the back of the house. Did you get in here? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a little cabinet room. There's nothing in there. It's like the one upstairs. 
fuck are they stripping all these TVs for? Copper, probably. Any kind of wire. Is it still there? No, it's just like right here in the yard. Oh, what? Yeah, dude, poke my head out this window. It's just in the yard? Yeah, it's just right there. <laughs> For a free gas meter, dude. I don't know why this place has anything, dude. That George Bush right here. Picture. Right here. On the ground? Yeah, who is that? Preston Terry the <laughs> third. From out here it looks like W. <laughs> Think the electric's still on? No, there's no meter. Ah. We came at the perfect time. Yeah. I don't want to go next door and explore that too. Right Fucking here. stole the whole door, dude. This is a dick move. The yard's a lot cooler than I thought. There's no way I'd be able to get the drone up in here. In uh, it's impossible. any other time, but this time of year, this place is inaccessible. What's down Does it look like basement? Yeah, well, honestly, dude, it kind of looks better than the rest of the house. <sighs> Not gonna lie, kind of looks right. I'm glad we didn't come this. There's nothing back there. Well, actually, that leads right into the other neighbor's yard. Yeah, that's. I'm like, I don't understand why there's a garage. When there's no yeah, driveway. how the fuck do you even get? How, there, how do you get a car back? There? I don't know. Somebody coming through here. I know, and the other side's peeled away too. Some of these are cut the this probably can really stick out. Another TV over there in the ground. Yeah, run around all these houses and the police are forced to have to check them. Well Vince, thanks for coming with us. No problem. You want a red light bulb? Yep. Oh my god, dude. Worry about shattered glass. Don't worry about the tetanus I got. <laughs> worry about the birth defects this place gave me. Although, honestly, if I had to pick a place to film, these are the kind of places I enjoy going. They're pretty fun. Yeah. Always something to do. Yeah, we wouldn't want anybody to break in. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm gonna leave it. You got a lockbox? Exactly how I found it. You should, you should put a lockbox on the gate. And it's like a padlock. Yeah. I thought about it, I'm like, well, there's no keys. So, uh, yeah. No, this is a, that's a separate lot, I think. That is? Yeah. A casual stroll through the neighborhood.
All, all the beautiful trees. There's a nice side view of that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.